بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وابنه الكريم وحزبه وبارك وسلم اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم يا كريم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إن شاء الله عز وجل continuing with the last part of the 188th covenant from the Muhammadan covenants the topic was in relation to meeting friends and the intention that we should have when we meet our brothers, the adab and the decorum in relation to this. The last part that we read was in relation to the statement of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Inan, rahimahullah, of how we should entertain the guests and to the best of our ability, present food to them, or if not, then at least give them a sip of water. And need to host the guest in a respectable manner. And then he he said, وَكَانَ يَقُولْ شَيْخْ مُحَمَّدِ بْنِ عِنَانُ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ يُسْتُ سَيْءِ إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْأَكَابِرِ عَلَيْكُمْ فَلَا تُغَيِّرُ مَلْبُوسَكُمْ لِأَجْلِ قُدُومِهِ إِلَّا بِنِيَّةٍ صَالِحَةٍ وَكَذَلِكَ إِذَا دُعِيتُمْ لِشَفَاعَةٍ أَوْ جَنَازَةٍ He says that when a leader, when a high-ranking person, a leader, a government official, a person who is looked up with respect in society. Koi rais, koi bada admi, jisa ma seth kehate hai. Aajai, when he comes to your house, then don't change your clothing. Don't change your attire because of him. Don't change your clothing except with a good intention. Allahu Akbar. Yani this is the the deep understanding and the deep uh, perception of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that they do is based on ikhlas. Don't change your attire if someone, you know, um, someone from Ahlul Dunya is coming, so you change your clothing to appear good to them. Because they will also class this as ostentatious if it's not done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَذَلِكَ إِذَا دُعِيتُمْ لِشَفَاعَةٍ وَجَنَازٍ Similarly, when you are called to intercede on behalf of someone in the court of the king, in the court of the president, of the prime minister, of someone of authority, don't change your item of clothing. In, in a janaza, when you see a lot of people gathering there, gathering a, a procession, a, a funeral procession there, and you will see a lot of people. So then your heart says, let me change my clothing so I appear distinct among them. So if, if, this, if this is the case, then don't change your libas, don't change your attire. And then he says, وَيَحْكِي ثُمَّ يَحْكِي عَنِ الْفُضَيْلِ بْنِ عِيَاضِ رحمه الله. He then quotes, narrates the statement of Sayyiduna Fudayl ibn Iyad, الله, one of the great prominent awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyiduna Fudayl ibn Iyad, الله, one of those whom Imam al-Khushayri rahimahullah mentions in the introduction of his famous risala, al-risala. عن تصوف أنه كان يقول لو لو قيل لي إن فلانا داخل عليك فسويت لحيتي بيدي لقدومه وأنا غافل عن نية صالحة في ذلك لا خشيت أن أكتب في جريدة المنافقين سيد الفضيل بن عياض رحمه الله would say if it was said to me that فلان so and so man of a reputable state respectable state, a noble man is about to come to meet you. And if at that moment in time, when someone informs me that so-and-so, a leader, a prominent person of a reputable rank is coming to see me, and I was to straighten my beard hair with my hand, 
because of his coming to me without a good intention, without pleasing Allah subhanahu, in the absence of a good intention, in the absence of an intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I was at that moment in time to straighten my hair because of him coming to me, I would fear that my name would be written in the record of the hypocrites, of the munafiqun. I mean, this is I mean, the deep understanding of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The awliya aren't ordinary people. You know, we eat, we drink five, six times every single day with no intention whatsoever. We sleep like sloth bears with no intention whatsoever. But for every single act, every single step, every single statement of a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is based, revolves around ikhlas. Doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, if any person comes to me and says, I اور اس وقت میرے دل میں اچھی نیت نہ ہو تو میں خوف کرتا ہوں کہ کہیں میرا نام منافقین کی فہرست میں نہ لکھ دیا جائے کہ اس کے آنے کی وجہ سے تم نے اپنی داری سیدھی کی اللہ اکبر وسمعت سیدی محمد المنیر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ یقول لیتحفظ الفقیر اذا دخل علیہ امیر کل تحفظ امام شعرانی رحم اللہ سید I heard Shaykh Muhammad al muni rahimahullah often say, a faqeer, someone who classes himself as a wali of Allah subhanahu a sufi, a sage, a saint, who is visited by everyone, by the umara, by the ghuraba, by the fuqara. He should be extremely cautious and he should be on his guard, an extreme guard, when an amir, a rich person, an affluent person, a man of great influence comes to meet him. He should be very cautious. Yani Imam, uh, I think I read about Imam uh, Al Fudail ibn Iyad, rahimahullah, he would have two doors. As we do the back door, the front door. Whenever uh, someone would come, the messenger would come to say that uh, Amir, so and so, the king, wants to come to meet you, he's coming to meet you, he would flee from the back door. And he would not, uh, he would not meet the kings. The same with Allah rahimahullah. He would not allow the kings and people of affluence to come to meet him. One day a chamberlain sent uh, approximately 1,000 rupees of that time in a, in a tray. Sent by the uh, Nawab of Rampur, I think, or Nawab of Hyderabad, I can't remember. Allah said to the said to the chamberlain, sent to the messenger, send it back. I don't need this. Okay, I'm not in need of this. My house, I don't have the etiquettes to welcome the kings, nor do I have, you know, no no do I know of this proper etiquettes to meet the kings. So there's no room for them to come to my house. Okay. They would stay away from uh, these people. But when the ulama do meet, when the mashaykh did meet the kings, like Imam al nawi rahimahullah, they would always do alamun bil ma'aruf wa nahyu anil munkar. Whomsoever it may be. Imam al nawis famous um, dialogue with uh, King Babars. He's very famous. And obviously Sayyid ibn Jubair before him from the Tabi'un. And his dialogue with Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, very famous incident. Imam Malik ibn Anas rahimahullah admonishing kings. Uh, of, of his time okay so he says he'd be extremely cautious when the kings and the umara come to meet you if you know that you will be able to meet him in a manner that you will enjoin good and forbid evil so say for example if the king is he's got um, three rings on his hand and you are able to admonish him then, then meet him. But if you, if you remain silent and if you will not be able to speak, because remember, kalimatu haqqin afdalu jihadi kalimatu haqqin inda sultanin jayra. The greatest form of jihad is to speak a word of truth in front of a tyrant king. But if you know that you won't be able to speak the truth, if you are, if you are sure that you will not be able to admonish him, then don't meet him. Otherwise, tell someone to send a message to the messenger of the king saying that Fulan, so and so, you're referring to yourself, is not there. 
يعني when you when you say that say يعني he says يعينو يشير إلى مكان بيعين في نفسه when he says the the sheikh is not there meaning have a place in mind keep a keep a, a specific location in your heart and say the sheikh is not there in reference to the place that you've got in your heart for example you hear you're not on Hollywood Road or you're not in your home so you say Fulan ibn Fulan is not there. This is called Tawriya, this is uh, permissible in situations like this. Imam uh, Sadhu Shaykh Rahmatullah has mentioned this, this extensively in Bahari Shariat, volume part 16. You are allowed to use Tawriya, yani, a, a, a sentence which has two meanings, and you refer to the distant meaning, and the listener will take the nearest meaning. You are allowed to use that, uh, it, only in cer certain circumstances. This uh, being uh, one of it. For example, has the Ibrahim alayhi salam said to the king, that uh, he used to obviously um, seize uh, uh, women with beautiful countenance and say that Sarah radiallahu ta'ala his beloved wife was extremely handsome so he replied she is my sister saying that sister in reference to being uh, my sister in Islam my sister in Deen okay anyhow وأين وأين من يدخل عليه الباشات والدفتر دار مثلا وعليه ثوب حرير فيقول له هذا حرام عليك فانزعه وإلا فإلا تعود تدخل علينا هذا أمر قليل وقوعه جدا فالهروب من مقابلة أولى والسلام. He says where are those people that whenever the bashat the kings and the viziers and the officials of the kings would come to them and they were wearing silk clothing silk is haram for men to wear. And if they're wearing silk, the man says, this is haram for you, haram alayk, this is haram, this is unlawful for you to wear, remove it. Where are these people? You won't find them. They're few and far between. Where are those people, you know, who say to these people that if you come wearing silk in my court, in my, in my house, then don't ever return back to my house. Don't come to my house when you commit haram. Okay. This is a rarity, this is few and far between, this never happens, very rarely. So therefore fleeing away from them is better than meeting them, do you understand? Fleeing away from these affluent people, you know they have these big sharks in a society that people you know, just remain silent, they, they can do whatever they want. And no one is there to uh, speak against them. No one is, is there to speak a word of truth, uphold the truth against them. So at that moment in time, don't even meet these people. Lest Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds this against you. That on such and such a day, you met someone who did something haram, which I made haram. Which was haram in the sharia of, the, of my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet you did not... Uh, uh, do taghir of the munkar you did not admonish him you did not forbid the evil because the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam man ra'a minkum munkaran falyughayyiru bi yadihi fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisani fa lam yastati' fa bi qalbihi wa dhalika dha'fu al-iman when whenever you see anything wrong happening in society then you should uh, 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 change it you should remove it with force if you can if you cannot then obviously at least with your tongue admonish the person counsel the person change the munka with your tongue verbally admonish the person if you cannot even do that then at least feel bad about it in your heart and this is the weakest state and level of iman وسمعت سيدي علي الخواص رحمه الله يقول من أدب الزيارة للملوك أن يدخل الزائر إليهم أعمى ويخرج من عندهم أخرس. I heard my Sheikh Ali al Khawas رحمه الله يقول say from the adab from the etiquette of visiting the kings is that a person visits them enters them whilst he is blind blind to what they do and he comes out of them, he returns from them, from, from the palaces, from meeting them, akhras, completely uh, deaf. Or completely dumb. Then he doesn't speak about this. And he saw that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should act in a manner that he has not seen the munkar. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold him accountable for that. Okay? Blind in the sense that, Keep your, keep your gaze on God. Because if you see something munkar, you will be questioned, why didn't you admonish that king? So enter A'ma 
and come out akhras. Akhras yani dumb, sahih? Yani silent in that man. فتأمل يا أخي جميع ما ذكرت لك في هذا الدهليز إلى العمل بالعهد ثم زور أو اترك والله يتولى هداك. So therefore, O oh my brother, carefully ponder and contemplate in relation to all that which we have mentioned in this manner, and strive to act upon this covenant. If you are allowed, if you are able to, st- uh, to act upon this covenant, then visit your brothers, visit the muluk, visit the kings. Otherwise, leave it. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala guide you. And then he quotes some of hadith, inshallah, we will mention these hadith, a couple of these hadith in relation to the blessings and the reward of those people who visit one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only for the sake of Allah. Not for a da'wah, not for a food feast. I love you for the sake of Allah, inshallah. وَرَوَى مُسْلِمٌ مَرْفُوعًا أَنَّ رَجُلًا زَارَ أَخًا لَهُ فِي قَرِيَةٍ فَأَرْسَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَى مَدْرَجَتِهِ مَلَكًا فَلَمَّا أَتَى عَلَيْهِ قَالَ أَيْنَ تُرِيدْ قال أريد أخا لي في هذه القرية قال هل له عليك من نعمة تربيها قال لا غير أني أحببته في الله قال فإني رسول الله إليك فإن الله قد أحبك كما أحببته فيه سبحان الله This is a narration in Sahih Muslim A man set out to visit his brother in, in, a, in such and such a town in a, in a town, in a city فأرسل الله تعالى على مدرجته ملكا الله سبحانه وتعالى send down an angel on his on route on his path الله send down an angel in the form of a human being فلما أتى عليه قال أين تريد when the angel came to meet this man who was going to meet his brother yes whether it's in Bolton whether it's in Preston Leicester wherever it may be but you do it for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى look at the reward this angel then asks the man where do you intend to go? Who do you intend to meet? قال, I intend to meet my brother who lives in this town. قال, Are you returning back? Are you going there to return back a favor that he extended to you before to compensate? Listen, لا. The only thing is, The only thing is, I love him for the sake of Allah. He is someone who reminds me of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We sit and we do dhikr of Allah. We learn Islamic knowledge. We go to the masjid. We recite the Quran. We learn knowledge. I love him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a man who loves Allah, so therefore I love him. I love him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the angel says, Inni Rasulullahi ilayk. I am the messenger of Allah, the angel who has come to you, who has been sent to you. To inform you that verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you as you love your brother for his sake. Allah has made you his beloved as you have befriended this friend of yours for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this obviously means that when you love someone for the sake of Allah, you become the beloved of Allah yourself. In another hadith it mentions وَرَبْنُ مَا جَتَ وَتَمِّذِيُّ وَحَسَّانَهُ وَابْنِ عِبَّانَ فِي صَحِيحِهِ مَرْفُوعًا مَنْ عَادَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ زَارَ أَخًا فِي اللَّهِ نَادَهُ مُنَادٍ بِأَنْ طِبْتَ وَالطَّابَ مَمْشَاكْ وَتَبَوَّأْتَ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْزِلًا Whoever visits an ill person for the sake of Allah or visits his brother for the sake of Allah there is a herald that calls, there is a caller that calls saying you are good, your walking is good, your walking is praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is praiseworthy, and you have prepared for yourself a place in Jannah. Just by you going to visit someone who is ill for the sake of Allah. Not that like what we do. Then we say in Gujarati, Marudi Kaido Turuk. Shadi ho, ya dawat ho, ya bimare, Marudi Kaido. Tapasi bole la mana. This is not ikhlas. You go to someone's wedding in order to instill happiness into that, into, to partake in the happiness that they have. With that intention, inshallah, it's praiseworthy. You go to visit someone who is ill because remember there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when you visit someone ill, Subhanallah, when you visit someone ill, then ask the ill person to make dua for you. Because the dua of the person who is ill is like the dua of the angels. And it is readily accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one narration it mentions, 
In one narration it mentions that when someone sets forth from his home in the state of ritual purity to visit someone who is ill, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 70,000 angels make dua istighfar for him. He, he goes, uh, whilst he's plucking the fruits from uh, Riyadh al-Jannah, from the gardens of Jannah, and when he sits there, when he returns back, he's completely submerged in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa These are hadith that will come later on. To Allah ta'ala, hum sab ko ikhlas ke saath har cheez karne ki tawfiq ta'a farmai. Humar tamama amal ko ikhlas ke saath hume karne ki tawfiq ta'a farmai. Rabbi Zul Jalala, humari tamam ko tahiyyo ko mu'a farmai.